of year, light levels are really high, temperatures are high, plants could be growing really well, but they mustn't be limited on the amount of water they have or the amount of food. So we feed our citrus trees every week. We actually use a specialised formulation for citrus, but there's a lot of other feeds you could be using too. holiday should be something that you can really look forward to but if you've got a lot of watering to do, deadheading, feeding and harvesting it might be more of a worry. Why not ask a friend to pop round and of course they get to take home all the produce and enjoy it for the time that you're away. If you've got a real problem there are ways of watering plants over the long term where you can fill up a tank full of nutrient solution and it will discharge the liquid to the plants as they need it for the time you're away. Always a good bet. Keep pinching out the side shoots of any cordon tomatoes and tying them in. That way the trusses of fruit will come out from the main stem. Once the courgettes get fruiting like this, just keep harvesting them. That way you'll have lots of young, tender courgettes to eat. That's of course the nest you like, giant marrows. Another thing you can do is pick the flowers and stuff them. It makes an unusual way of using courgettes. And here we've got the classic damage that you get from caterpillars on your cabbages. Um, the cabbage white caterpillars, they can absolutely decimate brassica plants. If you find some and you really do need to be looking for these daily, either squidge them or take them off, drop them in a jam jar of water. Another way though of preventing the butterflies from even laying their eggs is to cover the plants with a very fine mesh like this right from the start. The mesh is so fine, it stops the adults from laying their eggs on the leaves so you don't get the caterpillars through the season. There's still time to get brassicas in for Christmas. So we're putting in some kale here, but at home I've been planting some ruby red Brussels sprouts. I'm really looking forward to trying those for the first time. When you plant the brassicas, you can plant them extra deep and it will keep them growing strong. There's still time to get a few quick growing speedy veg in so we've got a few different ones here we're going to try some spinach um, and you can sow them relatively thickly and then just pull out the thinnings um, it's great to be able to use up where you've got little tiny bits of garden where there's a little space get a few more things in for the summer suffered with slug and snail damage. Best time to catch them is early in the morning and obviously when it's damp they come out. Look out for their slimy trails and pick them off. Other ways that we've been controlling them is using nematodes and putting out these wildlife friendly slug pellets like classic slug pellets and scatter them around the base of the plant or put them underneath a slate or somewhere where they'll stay dry. A great thing in the summer is tender herbs like coriander, dill and basil. Basil here, I've been recommended to harvest it and make some pesto, but I'm going to go and make some basil ice cream, which I just love. Well, August might not seem like the obvious time to sow seeds, but there's a lot that are worth thinking about now. If there's biennials that you want flowering for next year, like foxgloves or forget-me-nots, get them in the ground now. Also, if there's some perennial plants and you want them to establish as big chunky plants, get sowing them now and they'll be much better by next year. Also, there are a few special things like hellebores that always prefer the seeds being sown fresh from the plant. So if you've got hellebores with seeds on in the garden, a good time to get them in right now. This is what it's all about, all that hard work. So don't forget to enjoy the fruits of your labour. <laughs>